T160's engine is made predominantly of aluminium alloy. It includes a number of castings that carry ball or roller bearings made of steel and these rely on an interference fit to hold them in place. Now an interference fit is where the bearings outside diameter is larger than the hole it fits into. Heating the castings in an oven causes them to expand and refrigerating the bearings causes them to contract. Even though the dimensional changes from heating and cooling might only be measurable in thousandths of an inch, this is enough to make the fitting process significantly easier with little or no force required at all. The centre crankcase casting is up to temperature and ready to be fitted with two new bearings. The fifth gear bearing falls right into place. Once the casting and bearing reach similar temperatures, they will return to the intended interference fit dimensions and will be held firmly together. Since we want to fit a second bearing while the casting is hot, we will temporarily attach the oil seal holder to keep the first bearing in place so we can turn the casting over. Unlike the first bearing, the second one fits into a bore that has no shoulder to locate it. A special drift is used to insert it to the correct depth. This bearing requires a few gentle taps with a hammer and it's in place at the required position. Having a blanked end, this second bearing has now formed a plug to seal off the bore and stop oil escaping. With both bearings successfully fitted, we turn our attention to fitting the heavy duty crankshaft bore bearing to the left hand or drive side crankcase section. Once again, heating and cooling are used to ease the fitting process. The bearing requires only light taps to encourage it into place and a few taps with a pin punch ensure it is seated squarely against the locating circlip fitted previously. The second circlip is then fitted to ensure the bearing stays in its correct position. This bearing is instrumental in correctly locating the crankshaft laterally once assembled and together these circlips make sure the bearing is located correctly. The right hand or timing side end of the crankshaft runs in a smaller roller bearing since there is a lot less load on the crankshaft at this end. Using a roller bearing allows sideways movement of the crankshaft as it varies in length with temperature changes. The bearing's outer race is also located by an inner and an outer circlip. To make working on the engine really easy, an engine stand made specifically for Triumph engines will be used. The centre crankcase casting is secured at the front using the engine mounting lug and it rests on the surface of the stand underneath. The engine can be fixed in any one of three different convenient positions. It's time to fit the crankshaft. The two centre main bearings are of the split white metal slipper type. The caps are marked with the letters D for drive side and T for timing side. And they are stamped with a code that identifies them with the castings they were originally machined with. You cannot mix and match caps and castings. The letters D and T should be fitted to the front. With the caps removed and the shells fitted and lubricated, the crankshaft is lowered carefully into place. Some people like to fit plastic tubing over the studs to protect the crankshaft from damage as it is lowered into place. Bearing shells are located into the caps, lubricated and then fitted into their correct position, followed by the tab washers and nuts. Tension the nuts to 18 foot pound using a tension wrench and double check each one. Once all four nuts are tensioned down, bend the eight tabs that hold the nuts securely in place. Like the centre main bearings, the connecting rods also have split white metal shell type bearings. The con rods have been cleaned and polished and the big ends have been resized. I'm fitting the two outer connecting rods to the crankshaft now 
and the centre one will be fitted to its corresponding piston and will be secured to the crankshaft after the barrels have been lowered into place. Make sure the two bearing shell locating tabs are adjacent as the cap is fitted. Fit the nuts and tighten them to the correct tension in stages, making sure to double check. The T150 workshop manual shows that these should be tensioned to 18 foot pounds, but the T160 manual shows them as 22 foot pounds. Before we can fit the timing side crankcase section, we need to fit the two studs that are located either side of the crankcase opening. Using two nuts locked together, this can easily be achieved, and once in place, the nuts can be unlocked and removed. Two rings need to be fitted at either end of the oil filter gallery. These support the O-rings that stop oil from escaping when under pressure. The timing side main bearing has been heated in an oven and is now ready to be fitted to the crankshaft. A few taps and it literally slides into place. Once it cools it will shrink and be held securely in place. After smearing the timing side crankcase sealing face with master gasket, the camshafts are lubricated and fitted into place. The T160 exhaust camshafts have a slotted plug screwed into the end to engage with the taco drive. The gear change crossover shaft tunnel o-ring is fitted to the o-ring holder. With the oil gallery o-ring in place, the timing side crankcase section is introduced to the centre section. The connecting rod has been wrapped in a protective layer and is held out of the way as the cases come together. Bolts are introduced. The lower one is much shorter than the others. Nuts and washers are fitted to the two studs screwed into place earlier. And all are tightened securely. Here is a trap to be aware of. The drive side connecting rod cannot be rotated into place once the timing side case is in place so you must fit it after the timing side cover and camshafts have been fitted or wrap it in protective material and locate it between the two camshafts as they are fitted into place. Fit o-rings to the oil gallery and the gear shift crossover tunnel housing. Smear sealant as required and fit the drive side casing in place. Introduce the bolts. The lower one is the shortest and the two top ones either side of the opening are also shorter than the rest. Tighten all bolts securely. 